Good morning, and how's it going, everyone? Today I'm going to do a quick review of the Ducati Multistrada V4S. It's a 2021 model, and uh, I've put about 2,500, almost 3,000 miles on it. I became interested in this bike uh, after I rode the Panigale V4S, and I was just blown away by what a great engine and um, you know motorcycle that was. And so when the 2021 Multistrada V4S came out, I was uh, pretty sure that I would get uh, get one of these. At the time I had a 2019 R1250GS and uh, so I traded that in, actually I sold that separately and then I bought this, um, uh, like I said, about 3,000 miles ago. So I think I'm in a pretty good position to, uh, you know, first review this, uh, this motorcycle but also uh, review it relative to the 2019 R1250GS. Now this review is going to be sort of at 30,000 feet, so I'm not going to go into any great depth uh, comparing specific unique features of this bike versus that bike. Um, uh, but I what I will do is co compare the two bikes uh, on, on various dimensions, like, you know, looks, of course, looks are subjective, but looks, uh, you know, performance. And performance could be on the street or on the track or as an adventure bike. I also want to touch on the instrumentation, the display, uh, uh, the mods and the accessories, um, you know, both the availability and the price. Uh, of course, the overall cost of this bike versus that bike. Uh, some of the things that I particularly like and, um, and a, a bit on the maintenance of, of the Ducati versus So in terms of uh, the overall, you know, cost of buying the bike, the uh, Ducati, of course, is positioned as a premium, um, you know, motorcycle for the Ducati brand, and it uh, costs about I don't know twenty-seven thousand dollars, about uh, in that range, um, you know, plus tax. Now what you get with it um, are the two side cases. Uh, if you want to buy a top case, that would be extra and um, so yeah so that's the price the R1250 GS I think comes in at about twenty four to twenty four thousand five hundred dollars but it doesn't come with a side bags and of course doesn't come with a top case so right off the bat the Ducati is a little bit more expensive um, than the BMW but like I said, it does come with um, the two side cases. And if you were to add, you know, the frame and the side cases to the BMW, you would, you're probably looking at about $1,200. So, um, so that's that. And then the BMW comes with a three-year warranty, whereas the uh, Ducati comes with a two-year warranty. So that's something to uh, keep in mind. Obviously, you can buy an extra year or two years of extra warranty from the Ducati for, I don't know, six, seven hundred dollars, but that is an extra cost. Now, the one thing that uh, the Ducati comes with that is not available on the BMW as, as, as of today, as of now, is that it has the adaptive cruise control and a blind spot monitoring system. And I'll talk about those two features later on. So I don't know how much you're willing to pay for those, but... Um, you know, in terms of price, um, the BMW is a little less expensive, but then, like I said, even though it comes with an extra year warranty, it does not have the adaptive cruise control and um, it does not have the side cases and uh, it doesn't have the blind spot monitoring system. All right, the next thing um, is performance. And um, so, as I mentioned before, performance you can look at from the standpoint of uh, the street performance. Um, so that would include, you know, doing touring, whether it's uh, mid um, distance or long distance touring. Uh, then you could look at it from the standpoint of a track bike. 
Uh, and then, of course, you can look at it from the standpoint of uh, its um, you know, prowess off-road, so as an adventure bike. So let me deal with the adventure uh, 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 enduro sort of um, facet of this. Um, I am not a big fan of taking a big bike like this and doing BDRs uh, and doing cross country in the back roads. Um, I just uh, don't think that that's necessary and it, it is not particularly um, entertaining to me. Um, when I do want a dirt fix, I have a dirt bike and I usually take that out to um, a place like Red River Motorcycle Trails here in Munster in Texas and I get my dirt bike fix. Um, so I'm not real keen on taking this bike out um, and, and kind of flogging it on uh, gravel roads and dirt roads. Um, but, you know, I obviously respect those who do it because it is um, a skill set that, that's very important, I think. Uh, but for me, it's just not an issue. Um, now, those of you who are watching this video, for you, you might be wondering whether the Ducati is a good adventure bike, an off-road bike. And I will point you out to a, to a recent um, uh, review that I think Cycle World or Rider Magazine or one of these uh, you know companies did and posted it on the internet and they compared three motorcycles uh, the uh, Harley Davidson Pan American which is a new sort of uh, entry into the adventure world for Harley Davidson so the Pan American the Ducati Multistrada and the R1250 GS and I got blown away by the result because they ranked the Pan American number one as the as the number one adventure bike. So that that was very cool. So if you're looking for a bike that uh, is you know predominantly a fantastic adventure bike, then you might um, consider the Pan American. But suffice it to say that between the the uh, Ducati and uh, the BMW. Uh, both of them did extremely well um, on on the off-road side. So, uh, you know, again, for those of you who are looking at the Ducati as an off-road bike, I think, you know, if you put on, um, you know, some knobby tires, you will not be disappointed uh, because according to this, uh, to, to this review, the uh, Ducati did, you know, as well as the BMW on many, many fronts and in some cases better and in some cases worse. So that's the adventure side of it. Now on the street side, um, I have um, used the BMW, you know, on many, many long distance uh, trips. Most recently, you know, just before the pandemic, uh, I had um, done a tour of the Dolomites uh, in Italy and kind of did a cross country tour through many countries in Europe. So we actually went through the Swiss Alps and uh, rode through Austria and Germany, including on the Autobahns. And I gotta tell you, uh, you know, the BMW that I was riding, the BMW R1200 GS at the time uh, in 2019, it was fantastic. Uh, and uh, I had no regrets. But that said, uh, the street and uh, touring capabilities of this Ducati is just amazing. I am blown away by how well it uh, performs on the streets. Um, I particularly like the, uh, the cruise control. It's a, an adaptive cruise control. So what that means is that you could uh, you know, set the cruise control and then you can set the distance that you want to follow the vehicle in front of you and then it uses its radar to automatically manage that distance. So the vehicle in the front is slowing down, your bike will slow down. When it speeds up, your bike will speed up uh, to the limit that you've set it. And of course, if you want to pass the uh, vehicle in front of you, you just got to switch lanes. And when you switch lanes, here's another cool feature. It has a blind spot monitoring system. So if there's a vehicle uh, approaching you from behind, the light on the um, mirror uh, I think you can see it, it's right there, it starts flashing.
So uh, I really love those two features. Um, I'm usually a careful rider, uh, especially on the streets. I don't do anything crazy, and I almost always uh, do the head turn before I um, switch lanes. But having you know a virtual extra pair of eyes uh, that's monitoring the uh, lanes beside me um, is just an amazing feature. Now it depends on how your dealer dealer kind of deals with you. For me, uh, the folks at AMS Ducati, they were just amazing. Um, Marty Scribner and Jeff Nash, I did not pay a penny extra for turning on this radar. Uh, I do understand that in some other cases they've had to pay extra for it, so that's something you know you want to keep in mind. But um, again, from a just a street riding, you know, um, aspect, I would definitely prefer the Ducati over the GS. So another thing that's important here is the wind noise and uh, for the R1250 GS uh, there was definitely some wind noise and buffeting and that's one of the reasons I bought the Mario uh, the Vario MRA windscreen and that uh, you know, after that, I, it was it was very manageable. Uh, I know Ducati guys, uh, the engineers, have spent a lot of time trying to manage the wind on this bike. Uh, I know the previous version of this was pretty windy and had a lot of buffeting. In fact, I knew um, I know a rider who actually sold his 1260 multi strata because he couldn't handle the wind noise. So I think the current version is vastly improved. It has a couple of um, sort of winglets in the front. I think you can see them towards the bottom of the screen. Uh, and then, so that, plus the design of the windscreen, um, I think does a pretty good job. But uh, because I like the MRA uh, Vario windscreen so much, I went ahead and bought this and I've installed it. So what you see in front of you is the uh, MRA uh, Vario windscreen and um, you know it does a pretty good job so on the wind uh, buffeting and wind management um, aspect I'd give um, Ducati uh, higher points than um, the uh, 1250GS. Now all that said um, you know somehow this wind noise and the buffeting seems to be a complicated function of various uh, you know, variables including uh, the wind speed, uh, the wind direction, uh, your height, especially your torso height, the kind of helmet you wear, and uh, the way you position your windscreen. And honestly, I've never been able to really figure this out. So every time I go out to ride, if it's windy, I just hope it's not going to be too bad. Let's talk about the uh, instrument and the display. Um, now the BMW has a huge, uh, I want to say 6.5 inch TFT screen and uh, it's very bright and very easy to read and you know visually very pleasing. Uh, the Ducati's windscreen, uh, the instrument uh, display as you can see, um, you know it's good, it's very good but it's not quite as uh, jazzy as um, I think as the uh, BMW. So just in terms of the size and um, ease of reading, I would uh, give more points to the GS. But uh, the GS, the instruments, um, you know, the displays were pretty complicated to figure out. For example, if I wanted to know what the miles per gallon were or what the tire pressure was or um, you know how many miles I've done in a particular trip or how to reset and start again I just had to press a truckload of buttons and uh, it was not intuitive on the other hand the Ducati's um, buttons are very intuitive so once you get the hang of it you know I don't have to go back and memorize how to do it it's very intuitive so in terms of looks while I would give the GS, the nod, in terms of actual functionality, in terms of maneuvering and manipulating the screen to where you, you know, want it, and it's giving you the information that you want. I would give uh, the nod to the Ducati. All right, let's talk about the modifications and accessories. Uh, first, the availability, and then the cost. 
Now here, the BMW is miles and miles and miles ahead. I mean, this bike has been around for so long that there are so many options, whether you're talking about, um, you know, except, um, auxiliary lights in the front, um, brake lights, auxiliary brake lights, uh, top cases, uh, side cases, tank bags, um, you know, I don't know, uh, frame protectors, all that stuff. The market is flooded um, as far as the BMW is concerned. And so obviously the price is in check because there are so many suppliers. Um, the For the Ducati, slim pickings. This bike is so new and, and definitely different from the 1260 Multistratas that there are just a very, just a handful of companies that are making accessories for this. Now that would, you know, this is a problem that would uh, get solved over time, but, uh, um, you know, as of now, <clears throat> both the availability uh, and the cost, um, you know, slim pickings as far as the Ducati is concerned. So this uh, actually brings me to um, a um, something that I don't like about the Ducati. So I recently bought uh, auxiliary uh, lights and I installed them and plugged it all in. But lo and behold, it wouldn't turn on. And it turns out that I had to take it to the Ducati dealership and have them switch on some functionality in the uh, ECU for it to recognize that uh, there were auxiliary lights. And of course, uh, you know, every time you go to the dealership, you've got to pay for it. So that's a kind of an issue and a problem that I don't know why they, you know, didn't resolve. Uh, this is certainly not the case for the BMW. If you add, you know, Denali lights or uh, clear water lights, you don't, you don't then have to go to the BMW dealership to have them switch on something in the ECU. So that's definitely something that I don't like and I hope they... Um, uh, get rid of that issue and just let us add the accessories even if it's electronic accessories uh, without having to go back to the dealership and have um, the dealership bless uh, the accessory all right one big difference between the BMW and the Ducati is that uh, the Ducati uh, is a chain driven bike uh, whereas the uh, BMW is shaft driven so what that means is uh, you know, maintenance is different, and it's certainly easier, I felt, uh, to keep the uh, 1250 GS uh, clean um, than it is uh, the Ducati. Now, personally, it's not an issue for me. I, I like to keep my bikes clean and um, use it as an opportunity to look it over and make sure there's nothing leaking or uh, broken or cracked. Uh, but uh, be that as it may, um, it's definitely easier to maintain and clean a shaft driven bike uh, relative to, to the Ducati. And then I guess the last thing I want to touch upon is uh, the um, uh, miles per gallon. Uh, I think you definitely get, um, you know, in both cases you do use premium uh, 93 octane gas. So that part is constant, but I do I do believe that my 1250 GS gave me better mileage. Um, so in terms of mileage, and if that's a big thing for you, then definitely uh, the 1250 GS is better. Uh, for me, it's important, but it's not a deal breaker. It's, it's, it's an expensive bike, and you know, if you're gonna buy an expensive bike, paying a couple of extra dollars every time you fill up uh, the gas, even though it adds up, uh, is just not a huge deal for me, so. That's a toss-up, but uh, like I said, you definitely get better miles per gallon um, with the GS. So another way it might make a difference is if you're going long distance, you would have to stop, uh, you know, more frequently with the, with the Ducati compared to to the GS. So that uh, brings me to the end of this review. I'm going to leave you with some pictures of the motorcycle along with some accessories that I bought. Uh, if there's any aspect of the bike that uh, you'd like to know more about, hit me up with some questions and comments. And uh, until then, see you next time.